It could also be that this matchup is better. Uh, when I think about it, I, I feel like the Warrior Death Knight should have a big edge. Um, but yeah, this is actually the first time we're seeing Mez on Arms Warrior as well. So he's going to be playing the Arms Warrior uh, instead of the Fear Warrior, I do believe, on Ashtermain's Fall. Uh, typically, the Warrior Death Knight is kind of the king of cleaves, but Turbo, not too shabby as well. Druid versus Priest. Curious to see how this one does play out, which team's going to pull ahead. Uh, in terms of pressure, uh, we're going to be looking to see some really scary setups here uh, for Vigarista if he can get a grip into like a double blind. A double, potential double? Dodged gets it. Gets a double. Can he get more? What are they going to be able to go after? Do they get the stun? Big stun coming in. Big pressure. Sam I am. Forced to trade out the Astral Shift. He's going to be the Guardian Spirit also as well as the parry. The team looking at having to make huge trades early on in the match. Every single player on Team Liquid traded out a defensive, and now it's their turn to get aggressive here. What can they get on the VXJ? Oh. They drop super low. They get the fear on the rim. They trink it out. That's the Iron Bark, and the VXJ is also going to trade out his uh, parry right there. So both teams also using his rallying cry. So both teams uh, using a lot of defense here in the open. And now they're going to target Sidu here. Who are they going to get after? The next setup is uh, inbound here, potentially for the Frost Death Knight. Who are they going to get it on? Bigger East actually getting the setup on here, but he's going to get a nice triple defensive fear. Sam, I am forced to sit through that one. Mez is in a route, and they're just going to keep targeting Sidu here and uh, actually pressuring him a decent amount. But Sidu so far doesn't have to use his greater fate, still has that in his back pocket, which is going to be his primary defense in this situation. Still has his trinket as well, and now he gets gripped in. Here comes the triple blinding sleet. What do they have here? Do they have a static totem? Do they have the damage here to back it up? Am I am taking massive damage in that swap, but doesn't actually have to use an astral ship, doesn't have to use anything really to survive that one. And Sidu gets cross kicked here, and now once again, Mez actually taking huge damage from Vigarista. And Sam I am also taking a decent punch here, but he will uh, recover. And now it's going to be VXJ again uh, on the back foot, potentially. Rind is in the back line with Tree of Life, spam out heals onto VXJ, becomes the sharpened blade, but still, even with that Tree of Life, VXJ is just taking huge damage. Sam I am just blasts him, just harvests him, and takes him down. What was that? That was through so, tree. He was just spam healing him, and he still just died instantly. Sam is playing a build that no Enhancement Shaman has played yet. I don't even think anyone's playing this on live. I don't think even, even Sam has built a Shaman like this on live, because it's a build that you're taking a risk to do it, and legendaries are pretty expensive. Uh, he's playing a Lava Lash build, like a Hot Hands Lava Lash build of Enhance. Pretty much every other build of Enhance revolves around Stormstrike or Ellie Blast, but this one is all about Lava Lash. And, like He's got Lashing Flames, Lava Lash now increases the damage of Flame Shock by 100%, Hot Hands, Ellie Auto attacks with Flame Tongue Weapon have a 5% chance to reduce the cooldown of your Lava Lash and increase the damage of it by 100%. He's got Condor, it's like Magma Fist, Lava Lash has an additional 30% chance to crit against targets with Flame Shock. He's got his legendary. Each time Flame Shock deals periodic damage, you increase the damage of your next Lava Lash by 12% and reduce the stacking. cooldown of it. So you're just always spamming out Lava Lash, which is a button that you didn't really uh, use. And so maybe they weren't ready for damage outside of that typical window exactly. from an Enhancement Shaman. But he still had cooldowns here. Like he could just parry anytime, don't want to do it, gets chain harvested. Um, so that low cooldown chain harvest and the Lava Lash build. Pumping out some big numbers for Sam. Curious to see what that looks like on the scoreboard, because that build wasn't available last patch. You could not run that as an Enhancement Shaman. It was not an option. Uh, but the Conduits got buffed. The Legendary, wearing two Legendaries, synergized with it pretty effectively. Uh, and it made him a threat in a window that it looks like the three Capybaras were not ready for. Although this game kept going, I feel like the Priest was still kind of out through putting the Druid. That if it came down to mana, that the Priest would still win. Uh, but right here, you see Lava Lash, Lava Lash, Storm Strike, and then Chain Harvest. I think he was actually already dead. Sam Ham didn't even need the Chain Harvest. Like, he's already dead, kicking him while he's dead. Um, he did a <laughs> lot of damage as that build. And this was a build. Oh, like, my goodness. This was a build I was, like, skeptical about because, again, it's like, do I trust this? Like, it's completely different. Like, nobody's playing it. Do I want it? Like, even on my Shaman, I was like, I could do it. I could do a Lava Lash Shaman when I was on the PTR. But I was like, ah, it's not worth the gold. I don't want to do it, and then it's bad. I'm not going to run the risk. But on Tournament Realm, he's going to have access to all the gear. So uh, he did a lot of damage with it. 